on board here, board. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Stay back! <gasps> wait, wait, what the? This is a dream. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'm not saying just a dream. <sighs> Is yes, Izuku has lately been having horrible nightmares, in which is the pretty much the Great Purge and the end of one Bokatan's reign over Mandalore. But this next dream is a little bit more lucid, in which he sees a woman who looks vaguely familiar as she's trying to talk with him but he is not having any of that shit because all he can say is wait you're the one that attacked me like, I had no choice what would what, you do to me? what you stab me with? something that'll help what? Wait, how am I even talking to you? You're dead. True. I am. But I'm also not. I, I uh, how come back? To the building you found or let's just call it what it is it's a spaceship no 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 spaceships don't look like that does it look like I'm joking I don't know you attack someone right out of nowhere expect them to just to <sighs> Why were you the one I had to... Oh yeah, right. I'm a Jedi. I don't know what a Jedi is! <sighs> Trust me. And I... shall, uh... willingly share that information with you. Uh, yes, Izuku the next day, he barely slipped a wink in which Inko, she's pretty much, are you alright? Uh, I'm good. Just didn't have the best night's sleep, that's all. Nothing to worry about. Are you sure? Because it looks like you're pretty out of it. I'm fine. I'm fine. Perfectly fine. Why wouldn't I be fine? <laughs> okay. Maybe therapy was a good idea. As yes, Izuku is pretty much the. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know how. But for some reason, this person who attacked me out of nowhere is talking to me from beyond the grave, I guess. Yes, yes. 
this is pretty much when Izuku does end up going back to a, let's say a YT 1300 freighter. And yes, this Jedi woman is still dead. And right where Izuku left her. Still holding a syringe that, you know, he sure doesn't know what it was. But, you might as well just look around. So, you actually listened. What the? What the? How did. Wait! So, you're dead? Wait, you're a ghost? Yes. And no. Technically, I would be considered being one with the Force. What is the Force? <sighs> you have a lot to learn if you're gonna be a Jedi. What's a Jedi? You still haven't explained it to me. <sighs> That's fair. Well, first things first. I need to tell you about these nightmares you've been having. What? Oh, so you're the one causing those. Yes and no. Those aren't just dreams, they're also memories. Ones that I decided to share with you. Why? To, to teach you and show you the importance of why I decided to choose you for this important task which is <sighs> the dark saber what's that go back to my corpse and you'll see my light saber <sighs> Whatever, just please. Don't, no more weirdness. I cannot promise that at all. Of course you can't. J -j -j of course. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, yes, Izuku. He sees this weird cylinder-like thing. He's like, "Is this it?" Yes. Okay, so what now? You activate it, but you're holding it upside down. <sighs> okay, but what's this going to be? As Izuku is scared as shit, this, as this lightsaber activates, and he's like, wait, what is this? I told you, lightsaber. It is, oh, I get This must be a toy or something. Seriously? Seriously, what? You really think this is a toy? Well, it can be a real laser sword. I mean, those don't. Okay, I'll prove it to you. Strike at that wall with it. Mm, just do it. As soon as he does, he sees that. Yes, it melts through him. Why do you have this? It is, uh, of course, the chosen weapon for the Jedi. Okay, okay, fine, but I think it's time you explain what a Jedi is. Alright, well. Sit down. As, yes, Izuku gets a brief history of the Jedi Order, in which... You want me to become an emotionless conduit of this force stuff? And wait, how you don't even know if I'm what you would call force sensitive? Because you're able to talk to me right now. What? What? It's all because of why I injected you with in a haste. Wait, what did you... My blood. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? 
<laughs> you just what? It was the only way that I could think of offhand without just blatantly exposing you to it. Okay, so these metachlorican whatevers. They're in every cell of your body, or at least your blood and whatnot. Correct. And you decide to pull out some of your blood and inject it with, to someone else. Uh huh. In hopes to hopefully make a artificial quirk. No, it's not a quirk. Wait. Whatever. Either way, a force sensitive. Yes. And you did this because you want me to hold the dark saber. But you said this was a lightsaber. Where's the dark one? Somewhere on this freighter. Okay, let uh, me go acquire it then. No. You just said I know what I said. But you need training first. You need to learn how to become one with the force. Or at least the blade. Okay, but I can't just go around carrying a laser sword everywhere, practicing whatever. Why do you think? You're here. This freighter was uh, modified. Not only to house cargo, but also for comfort and training. Wait, what are you saying? This is going to be your training ground. And I shall train you until I deem it necessary otherwise but I'm just 12 years old oh believe me usually we start younger but uh, things change as yes this is pretty much Izuku's free time being spent Iko is worried, especially when she does see the lightsaber attached to his hip. She does try to say, okay, so what's that? It's a laser sword. Him just walking off, and he goes, okay. I thought he only liked all my merchandise. I don't know who anyone has a laser sword. Wait, do laser swords even exist here? Or was this for something else? Hmm. Oh well, I guess that's irrelevant at the moment. And yes, when it comes to Izuku's training, he's being trained not only as a Jedi, but somewhat as a Mandalorian. Jedi training is maybe difficult enough when it comes to the ways of the Force. But Mandalorian training is batshit insane. Izuku's not that good using the force at all. He can barely lift a few pebbles. So his Mandalorian training is really helping to strengthen his body as well as his reflexes, his skills. And uh, all in all, learning that, oh yeah, wait, you're saying that Mandalorian were the best at killing Jedi? Oh yes, you see, they were very smart, not just brutish, you know, invaders. Heck, they would learn about their target, or at least enemy, write down, or at least document their abilities as well as possible weaknesses. No way. Uh, yes way. 
as Ezekiel runs out and brings back his notebooks on quirks. He's like, are you sure you're not already a Mandalorian? Yes, I, I just... You see, um... It all started really because I... You were quirkless. But how would you... We can read minds. Uh, can you please not do that? Very well, if that make you feel more comfortable. It would. Please don't do that anywhere again. Okay. So tell me more about the Mandalorians. In which is Izuku gets more interested when it comes to the topic of the dark saber. He was like, "Oh, so the one who wielded the dark saber was Mandalorian and Jedi. So is that why you're doing partially?" You see, the Dark Saber, as per Creed, is supposed to be earned through combat. It is not meant to be given. What? So what you're saying is, I had to fight someone to keep this thing that I don't even have now? Correct. Either way, it seems as though hmm, I might be out of luck when it comes to that. What do you mean? Well, for one, no one knows about this thing. Hmm. True. And because of them just using it against me, they'll just. Take it, use it, and probably keep it. Huh. True. But at the very least, I know a certain someone who would love to get their hands on it. Excuse me. Oh, yes. The former ruler of Mandalore. Bukatan. Yes. And she was pretty much the end. She is someone not to emulate when it comes to certain decisions. You see, when uh, Sabine, the previous wielder, decided she didn't want the role as ruler of all Mandalore, she willingly gave it to Bokotan. Okay. And so what was like I said before, it's meant to be earned through combat and just willingly giving it to someone does not count. Oh so technically she wasn't worthy of it which is why she ended up losing it or at least the downfall of Mandalore correct and so that's where I come in I guess also correct whether she's worthy of it or not depends solely on hmm, if she can take it from you she has to win it by combat if she doesn't and you just give it to her willingly chances are it'll be a repeat of what happened last time and met Laura fall into even worser ruin and that is saying a lot. Wait, 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 wait. Y you don't even. You didn't even really explain to how you got a hold of it. Or. You see. She was. 
going to be defeated by one known as Moth Gideon. Moth Gideon? Oh, that's an interesting name. True. But yes, before this could happen, in which she would have lost not only the Dark Saber, but also the right to rule Mandalore, she decided to trust it to me. Okay. She said she would come to reclaim it one day. I don't know when that day may come, but I would like someone who would at least make it so she would actually deserve and earn the blade itself. Huh. That's very interesting. <sighs> but are you sure you want me to bear such a burden? When there are so many other <laughs> How sweet. But no. It has to be you. Because you gave giving me the shot? No, because you were predestined to hold that blade. What do you mean? As now there is a flashback to which yes, this Jedi got shot and uh, her nav computer got damaged. And which, yeah, she had no choice but to uh, risk a jump into hyperspace without anything to really guide her through the process of being placed somewhere safe. And she was bleeding out profusely. So to make sure Moff Gideon didn't get his hands on the drug saber, let alone anyone else, she braved the journey inside to risk it. Only thing is, as she's slipping in and out of consciousness due to like a blood, she is getting visions. Two, precisely. One is if she actually gave Bogotan the blade again without her actually earning it in which it is a bloody massacre beyond which Mandalore will pretty much be nothing more than the husk of a husk of what it was before but then the second vision she saw an emerald green warrior challenging that uh, Bogotan take the dark saber and actually earn it. It was the fight lasts for God knows how long with no one being declared the winner. By this time she's crash landed on this version of Earth and as you can expect she is uh, discovered by young Izuku. So, yeah. Though, yes, there may have been other potential candidates, Izuku seemed to have been chosen by the Force, if not anything else. So, yeah, he's supposed to have it. Which means he also needs to learn how to use it. But first, he needs training like hell. It comes to the other years of middle school, people have noticed that Izuku has changed. Though he is still a bit of a nerd, he does have a slight bit more of a confidence boost, all things considered. And because the Bakugo and his goons bothering him or bullying him, they don't actually. Izuku doesn't even associate himself with them anymore. He doesn't try to talk to Bakugo or his friends. He doesn't even try to really write down anything 
remotely related to Bakugo, because right now he's worried about training and fulfilling his prophecy. He knows if he loses, hopefully she doesn't, uh, this prophecy doesn't end up in him dying. Uh, worst case scenario, he dies. Best case scenario, he lives. He doesn't care if he gets to keep the blade or not right now. But being trained in the ways of Mandalore, mixed in with Jedi based training, Izuku has gotten more proficient in the Force. Or this uh, extensive time. At first, he could barely raise a few pebbles, now he's lifting large stones to boulders. When it comes to him trying to outpace a laser, he can barely do it. It still hurts, he, he's, it's not in real danger, but it still hurts like hell, as you could expect. And, yeah, Izuku's confidence shines through every now and again, though he does get embarrassed and Every now and then, until when uh, people do want to talk to him, and it's like, okay, so what's with you? He doesn't express that he n has power. He doesn't really care. As his training continues, he's pretty much, yeah, more like a analytical, strong, smart. Jedi Mandalorian When it comes to him actually doing hero notes he does to at least hide the fact that oh yeah I'm training how to use a laser sword I know so many ways to kill you but Bogo one day he's actually getting more curious on Izuku's activities and though Izuku does know some he decides okay for some reason I want to be petty and petty he is as he goes to dig a beach and starts using the force knowing that Bogo is right there watching him do it seeing him lift up trash compact it as well as move water like huh, make it flow like water <laughs> Bago he is still watching a rock in a hard place one he wants to confront Izuku saying he lied about not having a quirk and probably silently judging him or does he just pretend he didn't say a thing and just go about his day which one do you think Bakugo would do? Of course, he goes to confront Izuku. And Izuku accidentally pushed him right into garbage. When Izuku sees blood, then he freaks out. Which, luckily, his Jedi Master does let him know that, okay, okay, calm down. There's something you can do to help him. Really? Yes. If anything, I think it would come in handy for you to learn how to force heal. What's that? It's it's exactly as it sounds. Now, focus. As when Zuki does try force heal, at first it doesn't work. But then as he just concentrates and focuses on more using his emotions, then he notices Bogo's breathing starts to slow down. Him getting more freaked out and focusing and putting in more effort into this until the bleeding stops and Bakugo is unconscious. Izuku still freaking out. He starts picking him up and runs him straight to the hospital. And in his head, he was, "Oh my God, why did I have to go ahead be petty? Why did I, why did I have to do this?" Staying with Bongo the whole time. 
until he wakes up. Uh, uh, what the? Where the hell am I? You're finally awake. Uh huh? <coughs> you! Uh, hi. Katsuki. Uh, wait, what'd you just call me? Katsuki. Why? Uh, nothing. Nothing. It's just that I haven't heard you call me that in a long time. Uh, either way, what the hell was that? Uh, oh, I, uh, you had a court this whole time. I, wait, no, actually, I, I'm, I, uh, I'm a late bloomer. What? I've been practicing in secret this whole time. As soon as I learned that I had it. Are you serious? Since when? Him pretty much... No way. But how did you... What caused this? I, I don't know. It just happened. As yes, as you can imagine, Bago is highly pissed, but also doesn't want to risk pissing off Izuku. But when Miski shows up, Izuku is of course freaking out because he does have faint, faint memories of the craziness that is Miski Bakugo. Because Masaru is like, okay, if I go to him, I know there's a chance I get a lighter sentence. But, huh, oh, so you finally got your quirk. Good for you. And as for you, just look at Bongo, why were you following him? Uh, I was curious. Yeah, and look what that got you. Hey, it's not my fault. Oh, yes, it is. If you weren't so preoccupied sticking your nose in other people's business. Hmm? Uh, <sighs> exactly, that's what I thought. So the doctor shows up and he's like, okay, so what's the damage? Damage? What do you mean? How, how hurt is my son? Hurt. Oh, oh, right. He's actually in perfect health. But what about the blood? Oh, d don't get me wrong. There was an injury. It's just as though someone already healed him. Everyone looking at Izuku, him. Uh, yeah, I did it. You can heal too? Y yeah. Huh. Wow, you have one hell of a quirk, kid. He does indeed. Ever thought about being a doctor? Oh, uh, n no, I, I, I want to actually be a hero. Oh, what a waste! What? Yeah, heck, but quirk like yours to heal people right on the spot. And from what I can tell, he has no real scarring or. Oh. Hmm. Really? Yes. In fact, if you weren't able to heal him. Despite how fast you were possibly going to even get to the hospital, you you saved his life, most likely. What? Bongo was just like, are you serious? This fucking nerd saved my life. Yes. You most likely would have bled out if there was nothing to stop the bleeding or heal what was damaged. <laughs> 
him just looking at Izuku. Izuku saying that, wow, I saved you. Though, yes, he is proud of himself, but he's also guilty considering I also put you in that position. So, I do apologize. And as soon as people learn about this, because, yeah, of course, Bob go, they're going to be noticing a change in his attitude towards Izuku. So, wait, you have a quirk? Yes, I have a quirk now. And you saved. And you healed Katsuki. Yes. As yes, everyone, as you could expect, starts treating him like a normal person. They don't make fun of him anymore, right? They, they, they're actually generally nice. One thing is, Izuku, through his time training, not only in Mandalorian tactics as well as Jedi, yeah, he feels like, okay, you guys, you guys ain't worth a damn. He knows this. He feels this. He feels a disturbance in the force as soon as they decide to be nice. All of a sudden. Then the teacher shows up. Izuku. Like, oh. Oh. Oh, students. Let's get on with this class. Blah, blah, blah. The students start yelling and screaming, saying that Izuku has a quirk now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, yeah, yeah, just, that's funny, yeah, of course, Amadori is a late bloomer. Hey, go, go on, show him. Hey. Now, that's enough. Amadori, are you spreading lies? But, no. I don't know why not show us this quirk. Everyone seems to be so, as Izuku is getting noticeably pissed, as... The teacher keeps talking and talking, talking all mad shit, so, until Izuku just starts lifting him and choking him slowly. So, wait, 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 uncle, wait, please don't, please don't. Izuku dropping him was, did that feel weird? Uh, uh. Uh huh. What the? Where am I? <laughs> you are in your mindscape, kid. Wait, what? Yeah, you kind of passed out after almost killing your teacher. What? What? I what? You almost killed your teacher. All because you couldn't control your emotions. In fact, how easily you were able to heal that Bakugo boy is also suspicious. Were you tapping into anything else by chance? Uh, wait, what? Don't lie to me. I, I just felt worried and you started... Okay, okay, I understand. You start tapping into your emotions. Jedi don't do that. Why? I mean, can't our emotions make us stronger? At least our passion or something? Hmm. Where did you hear that? Nobody. I just thought, like, well, you thought wrong. Emotion can cloud your judgment in which mistakes are made. You have to be cold, calm, collect, access the wellspring of knowledge that you already have at your disposal and build upon it. You do not go dipping your toes in something like that. 
That is what the Sith do. Uh, yes, Master. Good. Well, all in all, you did good. Really? Yes. Though I still think you shouldn't have used such emotions. It's nice to see how much you still care for your bully. Right. Hmm. Either way, it means nothing. We'll continue your training up until bo arrives. Okay. As yes, when it comes to the inner middle school, Izuku, he's gotten a hell of proficient. Everyone knows it. The teacher doesn't even try any bullshittery. Of course. And Bakugo, when it comes to Izuku, Ever since Izuku got this power, his Bogos feel even more inadequate compared to how he usually would. But, all in all, it's not bad. Not yet. Because of the whole sludge villain, Izuku instantly knows his, Okay, I know you're behind me, I know you're this and that. As he pretty much stops the sludge villain in his tracks. Like, how are you? I trained a lot. Don't think for a second that I will allow you to capture me. Yeah, so the villain's pretty much shame bricks. If we could. <laughs> when all my dust show up, Izuku is still a fanboy towards him. Just nowhere near to how he was before. In fact, he has taken his jazz advice and pretty much like, okay, be more stoic, be more calm, don't let anything bother you, all that nonsense. So, Sludge Run is apprehended, and there is no second Sludge Run instant. In fact, Izuku doesn't even really get an autograph from All Might because yeah, he doesn't really care as much though yeah he is the number one hero Izuku has other pressing matters in which training becoming a hero hoping that Bokodan doesn't try to kill him you know normal things When it comes to the whole entrance exam, however, Izuku is using the force, but mainly to straighten himself as well as deliver heavy duty attacks. When it comes to the zero pointer, he's pretty much like, no, I know I'm not strong enough to take that thing on until someone does get trapped. Him, of course, overreacting, now being able to control his emotions, he taps in to the wellspring once again and completely crushes the zero pointer, shocking all the participants, especially the teachers and all my who already met him before, is even more interested in Izuku. Hmm. What do we know about this boy? Izuku Midoriya. It seems as though he's a late bloomer. Most of his life he's been diagnosed as a quirkless kid. Hmm. That's interesting. Isn't it though? Either way, you yeah. know. It does seem as though he has some great potential to become a great hero, don't you think? Toshi. Yes. 
Yes, he does. But something seems off. Like what? I've seen him before. I was upper hitting a sludge villain. It was weird. He seemed more stoic for some reason. Really? How so? Um, let's see. Uh, I say it would almost be equivalent to um, probably you, Isaiah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, he's he seemed kind of like someone who didn't care. You know, like you. Uh, I. I. Uh. Hmm. I guess you have a point. I know. But still. It is kind of weird. Never seen someone with such a uh, lack of emotion besides you. Ah, oh, you're so kind. Really, I wasn't trying to be. So, is he in? We would be foolish not to allow him to attend the school. Anywho, now let's get back to the ship in which Izuku is continuing his Jedi training. In which, when it comes to him not showing emotions, that was already difficult cool enough. But for him to start learning more about how the Jedi do things, like their recruitment process, he already says, okay, that's not a good thing. Well, this female Jedi is trying their best. Like, no, it was great. It's a great thing. There's nothing to be worried about. It's, if anything, it was healthy. It was great to take kids away from their families so they can train to do whatever we say or, you know, fight wars. It was just a no. No, 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 no. Wait, something don't sound right here. Tell me more about the Mandalorians. In which is pretty much not only eh, saying how badass they were, but also kind of throwing shade, bashing them on how uh, their ways were not that good. And yeah, Izuku's starting to notice like this. Huh? This is weird. I mean. Yeah, the Jedi is supposedly great and whatnot, but all you're really doing is making yourself seem like amazing heroes or heroines trying to combat evil, but, huh, I, I'm going to look around in this ship, but why don't you and your ghostliness... Just hang tight here. As you go, starts uh, inspecting the ship a little bit more, seeing all the weapons, all the armors, which he can't really wear, all things considered, he does actually come across something interesting. Hmm. As soon as he activates this device, it gives him a rundown. A Mandalorian history. So, just to uh, be a little nugget of archives that one Bo Katan decided to place on there. Then he finds a holocron, a Jedi fucking holocron, in which he, given his now force sensitive nature, is more than able to unlock. He gets a history of all the things the Jedi had done. Especially when it comes to... Oh, wait, you you knew slavery was bad and everything, but you decided not to do anything against it. You teamed up with criminals. You decided 
to set bounties on blah 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 blah. You eradicated the whole race. Granted, it m might not have been the most benevolent, but still, and you paint yourselves as the <sighs> sights of the galaxy. Upon him realizing this, he notices. Oh wait, I feel something. Realizing that his master was right there the whole time. And then he notices something's off about her. Her bluish hue has changed to a more purplish, slowly shifting to a red faced, anger induced entity. As he's wondering, okay, are you all right? You weren't supposed to see any of that. Um, I, uh, what else did you learn? Her thing, of course, she was always more, more of a strategist at times. When they were dire enough, she was always more smart than we gave her credit for at times. What are you talking about? Pukatan! Yeah. Anything. I don't know how, but she must have foreseen some errors in me training you. Wait, how is she? Shut up! Of course she knew! I didn't say quiet! Shut up, you shut up. Okay, are you alright? Shut up! I didn't say not you! <sighs> what, 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 what's going on here? I'm thoroughly confused. It's nothing. I'm fine now. Yeah, you are now. But explain to me what that was. None of your business. Nothing to worry about. Now just forget everything you saw and let's go back to doing things the Jedi way. The Jedi way is the reason why the galaxy was fucked. Fucked right up there. And... <sighs> you seem to be confused. What? <sighs> Jedi Order must continue as it has all these years. The Jedi Order is gone. It it does not exist anymore. I don't know what happened to you. I don't know where you think the galaxy's been going, but it is going to shit. <sighs> you sound just like them. What? Yeah, just like the voices. Uh, should I be concerned as she lifts him up with the force? Him like, how are you doing this? Silence. Wait, how are you? She's choking him. Izuku is scared, thinking, oh my god, this is it. This is how I die. And I wasn't even able to become a hero yet. And my life is going to be snubbed out by a ghost. She realizes, wait. Just using the force, grabbing her lightsaber that is now his, and trying to force her to let him go. But it's not working. He's using the light side, but he's the size. No, fuck it. Time to go. Time to take a dive into these emotions. And where she then notices the sudden shift as she starts yelling and squeezing harder around his throat. But then our boy uses force lightning. And zaps the ghost. He's pretty much like, okay. Interesting. 
how did you? <laughs> I learned fast. As then he looks around as she disappears. But then he hears slow mumbling as well as dragging. He starts <laughs> as he is face to face with his master's corpse reanimated with red bluish purple eyes and it she takes the lightsaber back and says looks like this is how you die shame he has such promise Izuku defenseless Scared shitless, has no choice but to run for the hills. But he's pretty much stuck in that ship because uh, she's not letting him out until he is dead and she has to bury him. So he's hiding, he's running, he's trying to make sure that he at least has a sliver of a chance to get out because he hasn't been able to explore this whole ship. And whenever she does find him, it's terrifying seeing her half-decomposed corpse pretty much lunging at him, yelling, roaring, as it tries to kill him. Him having no choice but to pretty much fight back with the Force. Only thing is, she's stronger than him. But then, he feels something, something else, it's not her, but something is calling to him, as he looks at the floorboards and see that, wait, why is this one loose, him opening it, and he sees the dark saber, finally claiming what was supposed to be his to wield. He sees a silhouette of his master, her lightsaber drawn and activated, as he finally, for the first time, uses the dark saber. And finally, this battle is completely one-sided. He has no idea how to use this thing because one, it's technically stronger. Then a lightsaber, so it was even harder to use, especially considering it's more like a katana. Two, it's heavy to him. He's terrified. His mind is conflicted when it comes to fighting her to survive, well, potentially killing her, well, again, and he, as well as just trying to reason with her. And yeah, she is kind of struggling with fighting him not because she really cares too much but mainly because she's pretty much a you know decomposed hard to move around like that so she has to use the force not only to keep herself together but also to fight this boy when Izuku finally is about to die he hears a voice coming from the dark saber telling him you're supposed to fight with me and against your opponent, you idiot. Uh, excuse me, you can talk? We are partners now. You're supposed to, I'm supposed to help you, but I can't do that if you don't lick me. Remember your training? Though, yes, she's turned crazy now. I really don't want to kill her. Well, <clears throat> here is your ultimatum. It's you or her. What do you think is going to happen when a rage-controlled former Jedi zombie who has full access to the Force gets out? She is going to kill more people. Tizar? Mommy Inko is going to die too. Are you willing to live with that?
And that's all you need to hear. That people could get hurt. All because he was too spineless to do what needed to be done. He takes hold of the dark saber once again, calms himself, and he mind melds with it, becoming one complete unit as he starts to outmaneuver, outpace, overpower his former master. And with one single strike, it is finished. He cuts her clean in half. She's looking up at him as he's looking down in pure utter disappointment and it's over. I'm not done yet. It's over, Master. I have the high ground. Not until you as he stabs her in the head and releases her ghost. Her looking at what she's become. Thanks, Izuku. And apologizes for the shit she put him through. Her fading away. Becoming one with the force. Finally at peace. Woo, that was fun.